Hi, my name is Akansh. Look what a great weather to write some code. Together in the next few minutes, we'll use the Agora SDK with React Native to build a live video streaming app. Let's go. This is what the final app looks like. We have buttons to start and end the call. We have a button to toggle our role between a broadcaster and the audience. A broadcaster can transmit their audio and video feeds into the channel that is received by everyone. Whereas the audience can only receive and listen to those streams they can't publish to the channel. So I'll go ahead and start the call on Android as a broadcaster. We see our video feed pops up. I'll join as an audience on the iOS device. If I move around, I can see the video is streamed to the other device. I'll switch my role on the iOS device to become a broadcaster and we can see that both the devices communicate well with each other and I can go ahead and end the call and the video feed is removed from the original device. So let's go ahead and start building this out. Let's begin. The very first thing we'll need is an Agora account. You can sign up for one on console.agora.io. Once you've signed up, you'll see this page. Here, you can go to the project management tab to create and edit your projects. We'll create a new one, call it Hello World. For authentication mechanism, we'll use secured mode. This lets us use tokens, which makes our app even more secure. Once you click submit, this might take a minute to sync with the network. Once it's done that, you can click on edit. We can now obtain the app ID for our project. We can go ahead and copy that. Another piece of information we need from this page is a temporary token. You can find that link here. Let's create a token for our test channel. Um, channels are very similar to video rooms. That means people on the same channel can communicate with each other. For a first channel, let's call it test and uh, generate a temporary token. Let's copy that and save it as well. That's all we need from the Agora console. Let's hop onto the code. So let's start by creating a new project using the React Native CLI. Now let's install the Agora SDK. We'll use npm and do npm i react native agora. Let's open the project in VS Code. Let's go ahead and write our imports. We have React and React Native getting a few things from there. We have the React Native Agora library, which is our SDK. We'll talk about that in just a second. And we also have this helper function called request Cambrian audio permissions. This gets us the permission for Cambrian audio on Android. And we have a style sheet called styles uh, here, which we'll take a look at towards the end. Now we have a few constants, so our app ID and token, we can go ahead and add them here that we obtained from the Agora console. We also have a channel name, so let's call it test. Now let's start by creating a new class-based component called app. Inside that, we'll have an engine variable, which will be an object for our class RTC engine. And inside the constructor, we'll have our state, which contains three values. The is host value is used to decide if we're the host or the audience in the broadcast. The join succeed value is used to render the UI once you successfully joined a video channel. And the peer IDs array contains a list of remote users with the UID that we use to render the videos later on in the app. We also have a condition for Android. Once our app is mounted, we request the camera and audio permissions using our helper function. And once we've obtained them, we can move on. Next, inside our component inbound lifecycle method, we'll call the init function. For the init function, we have a simple async function where the first thing we're doing is creating an instance of the RTC engine using the app ID and storing it in our engine variable. Next, we have these three async methods. We have the enable video on the engine, which enables the video module. We have the set channel profile. This lets us set the channel profile between normal video calls versus live broadcasting we're using the enum live broadcasting here. And we have the client role. So this toggles between being a host or an audience. We're using a state variable is host to select if we're the broadcaster or the audience. Next, let's add event listeners for warnings and errors. This will help us debug our app in case we are not doing things properly. Now for the big event, we have the user join event, which gives us a UID and a lapsed parameter. We'll go ahead and log that. The SDK fires this event whenever a new user joins as a host. We'll go ahead and get our peer IDs array from our state. And if this UID does not exist in the state already, we'll go ahead and add it to our state. Next, we have the user offline event. We'll do the same thing. We get the UID on the event in case a host leaves. If that happens, we'll remove them from the peer IDs array in our state, and that will trigger a re-render. So using the filter method on our peer IDs array, 
and removing the UID. Finally, we have the join channel success event. This event is triggered by the SDK once we've successfully joined an Agora channel. We're setting the state of join succeed to true so that we can use that to conditionally render our UI. That's all we need for our init method. Let's create a new function to start the call. We have an async function called start call, which calls the join channel method on the engine. Um, we're passing in the token, the channel name, null for the optional info, and we're passing zero as a UID. We can pass anything that we'd like, but if you pass in zero, the SDK automatically assigns us a UID. So we don't have to worry about namespace collision and things like that. We'll create the end call function, which is an async function, which calls the leave channel method on the engine. And now that we've left the channel, we'll set our join succeed to false and remove everything from our peer IDs array. Let's create a last function called toggle role, which lets us switch between an audience member to a host user. We set our state to flip the Boolean variable is host. And inside the callback, we have the set client role method on the engine, which takes in an enum based on what we want to switch to. So using our state is host. And depending on that, we're either becoming a broadcaster or an audience. So we're essentially flipping our role here. Let's do a quick recap before moving on. We have three constants, token and app ID, we were playing from the Okura console. Channel name is test. Um, we have three state variables, is host decides if we're an audience or a broadcaster. Join succeed helps us render the UI once we've successfully started a live broadcast. PIDs array contains the UIDs of all the remote hosts. We have platform permissions for Android. We have our init method inside the component did mount lifecycle method. Inside init, we're basically creating an instance of the RTC engine class. We're enabling the video using this method. We're setting the child profile to live broadcasting and setting the client role depending on our state. Next, we have few event listeners. Agora has an events-based SDK, so whenever a user joins or a user leaves, we get an event, and depending on those events, we perform some actions. So for example, for user join and leave, we're just adding them and removing them from the peer IDs array. And inside join child success event callback, we're setting a join succeed to true so that we know that we've started the call and we can use that same variable to render our UI. We have start call and end call, which basically call the join channel and leave channel methods on the engine. And we have the toggle role function, which calls the set client role method. Now let's quickly zoom through the UI. Inside a render function, we have a text describing if we're a broadcaster or the audience. We have three touchable opacities for buttons for toggle role, start call, and end call. Then we have a render videos function. For that, we're conditionally rendering the videos based on this join succeed state variable that we talked about before. We have the is host variable being used to check if we need to render the local user's video. In case we do, we're using the RTC local view component from the SDK. It has a surface view and a texture view option. We're using the surface view component and we're passing in a channel ID, that is our channel name, as well as the render mode. This decides how you want to zoom in or crop your video. So we're setting it to hidden, which basically stretches it out to fill the container. We also have the render remote videos function, so let's go ahead and define that. We're getting the peer IDs from our state to render the remote videos. We have a scroll view, which will contain all the remote videos. To do that, we have the peer IDs array being mapped over and returning a remote view for each of those values. We're using the same surface view option here. To render the videos, we're passing in the channel name to the channel ID as before. The UID parameter takes the UID of the current user that we want to render. Same with the render mode from before. And we're setting the Z order media overlay to true so that we can render videos on top of other things. We have a style sheet in case you're curious. This is what it looks like. And there's also a permissions handler. This is what it looks like to get permissions on Android. Talking about permissions, if you're on iOS, you would need to add the camera and microphone permissions in your info.plist using Xcode. Along with that, for iOS, you'll also need to create an empty Swift file inside your project. To create the bridging header, this lets the app run native code. That's all the code we need to get a cross-platform live streaming app working. There's more information along with all the code used throughout the video available on GitHub. There's detailed steps on how to run the app. The link for the GitHub repo will be in the description. To run our app, let's launch a terminal window in the project directory and execute npm run Android. Once that finishes, we'll have the Android emulator pop up with the app. We have the same app from the demo. We can start the call. We can move around, end the call, toggle our role, etc. Um, one thing I did have to change, however, was I had to extend my app from a React component class. 
strictly speaking, this isn't required, but if you're building a full-fledged app, you will unmount the component and you should destroy the engine instance. This removes all the event handlers and frees up the memory. Um, last thing I did have to change was I added a safe area view instead of a view so that everything fits into my iOS device. Once you are ready to deploy your app, you'll need to host a token server to fetch tokens from. There's a link in the description for token generators in all popular languages. There's also a pre-built Colang token server that you can quickly deploy to Heroku using one click. So you can find a link to that in the description as well. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. We're bringing out more React Native content in the future. If you have any questions, you can visit our GitHub, Slack, Twitter, all of that is linked in the description. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for future videos. Thanks for watching.